Hi guys, it is story time o'clock, okay? <laughs> Last year, earlier in the year, my UK visa was rejected and then towards the end of the year, it was approved and now I am a resident of the UK, okay? So grab your popcorn, grab your drinks. One of the reasons I like to tell stories like this is that there is always a lesson or two that you can learn from it, okay? Even if you're not trying to apply for visa or travel or whatever, there are always like general life lessons that you can learn from stories like this. So yeah, let us rewind to the beginning. You guys remember two years ago, was it two years ago at this point? Yeah, I think two years, it's two years ago. My friends and I had a girl's trip, okay? Nelo was on that trip, Chinyere Abang was on that trip. So we went to Zanzibar and we had so much fun, okay? That trip was maximum fun. And we told ourselves that, you know, we're going to try and make it a regular thing to come together and just go on girls trip and the general plan we had for the next year that is 2023 the general plan we had for it was we were going to come to the uk and also go to other schengen countries okay so basically we were calling it the euro tour okay we're going to go on the euro on a european tour and you know we were very excited just making plans generally it wasn't like anybody had done anything concrete but we just made the plans generally okay after seeing the success of our first girls trip some people wanted to join us okay so my sister wanted to join my sister-in-law wanted to join and one of my best friends also wanted to join so i was excited i was like yeah like it's going to be like a more interesting trip having my own personal people there as well so it's just going to be like one big family just have fun and do stuff okay so the next year came 2020 and we started making plans for the trip okay not even concrete plans again we could tell that it wasn't going to work out the way we wanted it to work out okay um yeah 2023 was one kind the year was just one kind you know so we just knew that ah this our girl's trip might not leave the group chat but Nello was like no matter what happens she's still going to go on her girl's trip and me too i was like no matter what happens i'm still going to go on my girl's trip okay and i was sure my sister was coming at least i was sure that my sister was going to come so i was like i think my sister is there Nello is there like okay whatever like <laughs> i'm good <laughs> that was how my sister went and got pregnant <laughs> That's how my sister went and got pregnant. But anyway, yeah, my sister got pregnant and there was no way she could come for that girl's trip. So she dropped out. My sister-in-law was very busy, so she also dropped out. And even the European tour part of it, that's going to like the Schengen countries, you know, places like Greece, Paris, all those places, that part of the trip, you know, seemed to be out of the picture as well. So I was just like, ah, this kind of girl's trip service is not going to be... Like, I was reluctant, to be honest. I just didn't feel like going. But Nelo was really interested in going. And one thing about me is that I can be very introverted, okay? Like, I can stay in my house all year and not feel bad and I'll be fine, right? I can be that way, but I don't want to be that way. Because I want to have more interesting life experiences, I don't want to be that way. I don't want my story to just be... She was at home from January to December, okay? I want to travel, I want to go on trips and stuff like that. So yeah, because of that, even though I wasn't really interested, I wasn't going to back out, okay? I wasn't going to back out because I know myself, on a normal day, I will not on my own sit down and plan a girl's trip. I won't, like... <laughs> I'm not that friend that would plan a... I'm not even that friend that would plan a girl's, out, girl's night out or anything like that. I'm not, I'm not that friend that would do that. So I just know that if I don't force myself to follow somebody who would do that, I will end up not doing it, okay? So as much as I was reluctant, I just I wasn't really interested again in the trip. I was like, this is an opportunity you don't want to miss. And even when the fact that I know that even on my own, I can't even go for a solo trip. I know myself, I will not. I, it's not going to work. <laughs> I won't do it, okay? Um, minus that fact, it is it is cheaper to go on a girl's trip with other people, okay? It is cheaper to go on a girl's trip or it's cheaper to go on a trip with a group of people. You know, you have at least a roommate to share your room with or share your suite with or share your um, villa with, okay? If it's villa you guys want to get, you would have... It's cheaper per person when you go as a group. Even activities are cheaper when you go as a group and that's what really helped us in zanzibar zanzibar would have been more expensive for us if maybe just two people were going or just one person was going it would be very expensive but because we were in a group we stayed in a very nice villa we didn't pay so much per person because you know we shared the bill basically okay so 
that's another reason why I'm like anyhow I go choke myself whether or not I'm interested I'm still going to go because this is going to be a cheaper way for me to go to the UK and just have fun so I think around was it not April yes yeah, it was around April the time that we went for Vivian's wedding we also went for our UK visas okay and I even carried my children along I don't even know why I carried my children along for that trip like each time I remember that that's Abuja trip I'm like but why did I carry my children though <laughs> The way, that, the way that thing happened was funny, but let me not even go into those details, but imagine paying for flight tickets for four people because I, I took um, my kids and um, Elizabeth. Imagine after paying that flight ticket, I was not like, but wait though, they didn't have to follow me to Abuja, like, but anyway, um, so we went to Abuja and we applied for our UK visas. For Nello, it wasn't her first time applying for a UK visa. I mean, she schooled in the UK, like she did her master's in the UK and she had, you know, traveled to the UK several times. But for me, it was my first time ever applying to the UK. I have applied, I've gotten a Schengen visa before, but you know, my Schengen visa has expired. So I was applying for a UK visa for the first time. And I don't even know what I was thinking, okay? The same thing happened to me with the Canada visa. If you watch my Canada visa video, I talked about another country that denied me visa at the same time, okay? It was the UK, it was the UK. Some people already guessed it in the comment section though, but yeah, it was the UK. So uh, we went for that trip, we applied for our visas. I used myself as sponsor. I don't even know what I was thinking, okay? I don't know what I was thinking, but I used myself as sponsor because I mean, you know, I just feel like I had enough money to for the trip. Like, I don't know. I had enough money in my account to show that I can take care of myself. There was no point in me trying to get my husband's account details or, or job or whatever. I just felt like, I mean, it's enough for me to go. Like, am I not somebody? Am I not a human being? <laughs> anyway, so I used myself as a sponsor. I put my account details, everything. And in hindsight, that was a wrong move, both for Canada and for UK, that was a wrong move because these countries are very suspicious of everybody that's applying. So you need to give them enough proof. Someone said applying for visa is a very degrading process, okay? You carry all kinds of documents, carry all kinds of things to beg them that, see, I have money, please allow me to enter your country. I have money to come and spend in your country, I beg. <laughs> So someone was saying it's very degrading and I agree, especially when you're denied, it, it feels degrading, okay? But yeah, don't see it that way. If you ever get denied visa, don't see it that way because at the end of the day, the two countries that denied me visa, I still went there, okay? The same year, the same year, not even like, oh, two years later, the same year, I still went to those countries. So, um, so after I applied for the visa, um, me and Elope applied together. We even pay, paid for priority. So many things. That thing was very expensive. We, we paid for priority and stuff like that. Then I also paid to hold on to my passport because if you watch my Canada video, I applied for Canada ar around the same time. So I didn't want to submit my passport to UK and then Canada will call me, okay? However, at that point when we went to apply for that visa, I remember that we asked them there how long it takes and the guy was saying that maximum three weeks, okay? But I already paid for it online to hold on to my passport. So if I had known that, you know, the visa used to come out like just in three weeks or even less, I wouldn't have paid to hold my passport because I feel like that may have impacted the whole visa process as well, okay? Another thing that happened to me was that when Nello applied, they collected all her documents from her. But when I applied, they gave me back my photocopy of all my visa pages that is my visa from different other other countries that i've gone to before they returned the photocopies to me and mind you they were not with my passport okay so there was no evidence that they had that i had been to other countries and the low zone they actually collected all her photocopy but i actually discovered this outside because when we were leaving i was like i don't understand why this man gave me back amazon prime is here amazon prime is here <laughs> Anyway, yeah, so I was like, ah, I don't understand why they gave me back all these documents. Did they give you back your documents? And she was like, no, they didn't give her back her documents. So I was like, ha. So that was the first, you know, feeling I had that, ha, this thing may not be successful though. But the truth is that even though I felt that way, I didn't really care. Because at that point, I had never been denied visa. So I was like, hey, they denied the visa, yeah, whatever, whatever, I don't care. After all, it's not like uh, the trip is the way we planned it before, so whatever. <laughs> See, so yeah, if there's one thing I have learned about myself in the past few years it is that my words carry power okay i've always known that too i've always known and i've always used it to my advantage but sometimes even subconsciously i use it to my disadvantage okay my words carry power make una i am now a prophetess <laughs> donate to my ministry i am now a prophetess no but seriously 
by what Skype Power. Our what Skype Power is not even just me in particular. Like our what Skype Power, you might not know it, but you might actually be directing your life the way you don't in your head. What you what you want in your head or in your heart might be different from what you are saying, and your life will be going in the direction of what you are saying, not in the in what you are feeling so yeah i was just like mm, even if they deny me the visa whatever like i don't really care i don't even want to go safe even though i didn't say it to the low i didn't tell how <laughs> because i told myself that anyhow if if they don't deny me visa and the time for travel comes i will still travel okay but you know how let me okay i think the best way to explain this is you know how you agree to go for a party or go for an outing or go for something and then when the day comes, they're like, why did I agree to this thing though? Like, ah, oh, like you now be like, ah, oh, I wish I, I wish I, I wish I can cancel. I wish I don't have to go for this. Okay, that's the feeling I had. So it's not like, oh, I, I would have not gone. I would have gone and I would have had fun, but it was just that pre-travel feeling of, I don't really care because mm, my sister is not there. You know, it's not going to go the way I wanted it. So whatever. So I remember um, the lost visa came out first, and we were so excited for her own. And I don't know why, when she got her own, I just had this feeling that I won't get it. But I didn't say it though. But I just had this feeling that I won't get my own. I was like, ha. No, I think I even said it that. Ha, that I hope I'll get it or something like that, Sha. I just had that feeling that I won't get it. But I just pushed that back on my mind. I didn't really pay attention to that feeling. But time was now going because she got her own in maybe like two weeks, less than three weeks. Maybe in two weeks she got her own. I was like, ha, okay now. How come I'm not getting my own? Like we applied at the same time. Why didn't we get our own at the same time? Like the, that is the email. Why didn't we get our own at the same time? And after she got the email, I think her own took like three days or four days and she got her passport back. So I was just wondering why my own hasn't come out, but you know, we move. It's not like I was just sitting down wondering, but it was just that passing thought of, where's my own? And then I'll move on to other things, right? Only for me to I think that I was even with Nelosev when, when I got that rejection email. Only for me to get email one day. I just opened it and saw you have been rejected. There be your, your visa has been rejected for so so, so reason. Basically, they just did not believe that I was going for vacation. They even said it there that the guy said he does not he does not believe, he does not think that I'm going for what I said I'm going for and that I can afford to take care of myself for the whatever i don't know how he, i can't remember the wording but basically essentially that's what the guy was trying to say that he does not believe i'm going there for vacation and does not believe that i have the money to to go for vacation hey i say chai i don't suffer i don't suffer no be small <laughs> in the time man, yeah. Eh, you look me finished from head to toe. You look my picture finished. Mind you, I added on my Instagram, YouTube, all those things. I don't even know if those things even count. But I added my social media, so you know that I'm not running away. So you look me finished. You look my account finished. And you think that, okay, another thing I think that might have added to it is that my YouTube money, I try to save it, okay? I try to save all, you know, money I make from YouTube. And then when it gets to like a bulk figure, I send it to my husband to help me invest, okay? Now, that period, I think that I told him to send me back some of my money because of the travel, not even for the, not to cover the travel expenses though, but because of the visa application process, I told him to send me back some of my money, okay? So he sent me back, back a bulk figure into my account, okay? Now, in hindsight, I feel like them seeing that bulk figure coming back into my account, they will think that I maybe borrowed money just to show that I have money. But the truth is that if you check my account's history, you will see that I had made all those money and I had sent out that money in bulk. Okay, that's what I think. These are just my excuses. I'm just trying to rationalize it in my head. I feel like maybe them seeing bulk figure leaving my account and coming back to my account, they might think I just did that because Maybe they might think that I just borrowed money. I don't know. Anyway, when I got that rejection email, I actually felt bad. Like, and, <laughs> and the funny thing about things like this is that you might not want something so badly until they not tell you that you cannot have it. Then you'll not be like, that is, that is all I want in this life. You see that thing that you say I cannot have? That is all I want in this life, okay? Um, but even though, well, for, this, for the UK trip, I didn't really feel that way. For the Canada one, I felt that way because of my sister. But for the UK trip, I felt bad though. But my feeling bad was not, oh, they are preventing me from traveling. No, it was just that, 
What do you mean that I'm not going for what I said I want to go for? What do you mean I, I cannot afford it? Like, I was just like, uh -uh, why are they treating Nigerians like this now? I really felt bad about it, but it didn't pain me as much as the Canada one because, again, like I said, I was already dragging feet for the trip, okay? I remember people telling me, oh, don't worry, just add more details and then, you know, apply again. I said, I'm not applying again, I'm not interested. Like, I, I'm true, true, I wasn't interested in applying again. I said, I'm not applying again. Which one? Which kind? Like, no need, I beg, I beg, I beg. <laughs> It's vacation, don't worry, one, one day we'll go there again, that's what I was thinking then But yeah, I wasn't going to reapply for that visa again I was like, I beg, give me gonna carry your country, go your nonsense <laughs> I will go to other countries, other countries will give me visa and I will go to other countries And you people are going to feel the loss, okay? It's going to pain people that I'm going to other countries <laughs> You people are going to be generous when you see me going to other countries, okay? Anyway, that was why they rejected my visa, I was sad but I moved on only for shortly after Okay, you see this God, you see how God works, okay? Only for shortly after my husband got this job. When I thought about it, I was like, oh, more thank God, though. That's how I would have carried my money, pay for flights, pay for hotel, go for girl's trip, only for me shortly after to come and be living in the country. <laughs> if I pay me, eh? If I pay me, if I had gone, gone for that girl's trip, only for me to not be living, not even that I came to visit the country. I am now living in the country. That London now, I go go there, I go tire. <laughs> if I want to be going to London every weekend, I can be going to London every weekend. You know, so like God just, things just work out for my good. That's just the truth. That's just the summary of this whole story, okay? Things always work out for my good. Any which way, any which way the devil intends it, any which way the thing wants to corner, 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 it still circles back to working out for my good and I'm so thankful to God for that okay and that was why when we applied for our visa and my visa came I was so excited like when my passport came and I saw my visa I was so excited I was like eh hey, hey, UK one a day is a one it's not UK zero a day is a one because they dealt with me so you people dealt with me and I've gotten the visa so UK one a day is a one okay God no go first now draw now draw when I do me me too I do on the back now draw <laughs> And that's another thing, when we were all applying for our visas as a family, somewhere in my head, I didn't tell my husband though, but somewhere in my head I was like, hey, they've rejected me visa just this year. Hope they will not now come and reject us visa because of this one. Like, it was somewhere in my head, but I didn't say it out because I was like, I beg, you know, let me not give in to that fear. But in my head I was like, let them not come and say because they've rejected me visa earlier this year, they will not reject me this one. But the fact that I actually got my Canada visa was giving me mind that I beg, it doesn't matter. That they rejected you that year does not mean that they will not give you visa again. The truth is that for some of these countries, okay, that they rejected your visa does not mean that you can never go back to that country again. It just means that you need to get all your documents right, okay? Get all your information right. If you need to add supporting documents to show that, you know, you have ties to Nigeria, especially for visitors visa, you want to show that you have ties to Nigeria, then get all those documents and add, okay? I had to add land documents. I had to ha add house documents, okay? <laughs> Well, for Canada one, I had to add house documents, land documents, then my husband was now the sponsor, and then, uh, what else again, he added his account details, like, yeah, for, as, if, if your husband is the sponsor, he has to add his account details, okay, that was what I did for the Canadian one, but for this UK one, it was a, the company covered all those things. Okay, so for the UK one, that is this one we are using now. I had to put my statement of account, but it was only to show that me and my husband live in the same place. So I had to put my statement of account and he also put his, but it wasn't for the monetary aspect of the visa process. It was more to show that both of us are married and we we live and have been living in the same house. Okay, does that make sense? So that was the only reason why they asked me for my account statement and i think it was just like one page or something it wasn't it wasn't long but yeah that was the tip that ij told me i also had a friend of mine that told me the same thing that you need to add as many things as possible don't think that oh it's just a one week visitors visa why do I need to add all these things? My dear, just add. Just add. You never can tell. So I had to add house. I added land. I added my accounts, my husband's accounts. I added my YouTube. He added his, his company. Like we added a lot of things so that they will know that, you know, I'm not running away and I'm who I say I am. Okay. But yeah, that was it. So that was how shortly after the rejection, I now got visa and now I am living in the country. Hmm? I'm now living in the country. <laughs> But yeah, it's so amazing how life works and how God works because at the time that they rejected my visa, I felt really bad though. Like I felt bad that I was being rejected 
okay but if i had known that i was going to end up in the country that same year i would have been happy they rejected my visa then because if they didn't reject that visa then i would have paid for hotel paid for flights paid for this paid for that ca carry shopping money and shop shop like a mad person <laughs> You know how it is on such trips. You will go there and shop, 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 spend all your money shopping only for me to now end up in the country. In fact, only for me for, to start looking for how to give out all those things because at the end of the day, we have to give out a lot. But yeah, if there's one lesson you will take from this video is that that thing that might seem like a serious disappointment might actually be a blessing in disguise, okay? It might actually be God saving you from something. I know I, I, know I said in my travel video that when people were telling me, it, it is well, you know, everything happened for a reason, I was like, I beg. <laughs> I was too angry to think of it. I was like, I beg, I beg, which one is everything happened for a reason? You people made me miss spending Christmas with my husband, you know, made disappointed my kids, and telling me everything happens for a reason. I didn't want to hear that, but the truth is that, you know, everything does happen for a reason. Maybe at some point, I would, I would find out why that thing happened to me. Maybe, as of right now, I've not found out anything, yet, but maybe, maybe later on, I'll find out that the day the guy did not allow us travel, you know, something good came out of it okay yeah that maybe someday i'll find out but at least in other ways but at least for this story it was actually a blessing in disguise and i'm forever thankful for it but anyway let me know your thoughts in the comment section thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you all in my next video bye guys